what's going on YouTube this is your boy hype down and today we are on the Legion beta right now I am on holy DK spec and I'm here to share with you my unholy DK talent tree build now guys at the moment we're only able to play battlegrounds so this build is kind of just revolving around battlegrounds or RBGs um, I've had that Legion Alpha in you know, a Legion beta but if you watch my first video I explained that I had a really major latency issue which kept me at 500 to 1000 MS so things were at a five second keystroke delay and not only that things will freeze and then skip scatter and go to me like I just could not test anything it was horrible I was in a bad mood and um, I don't like posting videos if I'm not uh, energetic I should say you know what I'm saying I was really upset so but enough blab let's get into these talents the unholy DK is first I would make blood DK second I would tell you why in a minute because blood DK is pretty fucking fun man and it's looking fucking solid man I, it, it, it almost feels like they're trying to make blood DK is a, a PvP spec like I said I'll explain that in a second but anyway unholy DK talents first guys I'm going to I'm going to explain what I have why I have it and then I'm going to go over the ones that you see over here. I'm going to go over the talents and the honor talents. Again, I'm going to go over the ones I have first. And then if you guys care to stay, I will explain each and every single last one of the other ones. And why I did not choose it. So let's get right into this, guys. First, we're going to go over Ebon Fever. Now, Ebon Fever is pretty much going to speed up your dot ticks. Now, if you read it, it says a variant plague deals the same damage in half the time. Your variant plague is right here on the outbreak. It does 112,357 shadow damage over 10 seconds. And it's 10 seconds because I have Ebon Fever. But if I take Ebon Fever off, it's going to be the same amount of damage but increased time. So like I said, this speeds up your dot ticks. So instead of 112,000 damage being done in 21 seconds, it's being done in 10. So that's really, really great. Like I said, it shortens up the time and it's making it like I said hit harder so you know what I'm saying that's like I said that's 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 great that's why we have Evan fever guys in pandemic causes each of your variant plagues within a hundred yards flare-up dealing 49,849,000 shadow damage to the inflected to the infected enemy in addition 9,139 shadow damage to all other enemies near them what this means guys is if you have your dots on everybody the everybody within 100 yards is going to take damage. So that means, in the, like, let's say we're at Blacksmith. If you got, if you have half the guys by the entrance and half the guys by your uh, your flag, if you hit Epidemic, everybody's going to fucking flare up with a hit. Every and in an RBG uh, scenario, everybody's always going to be by everybody. So you just pretty much spam this. And whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And you're just, your damage is just going to, you're padding pretty much with this. This is great. And um, I hope it gets a little buff though, because it's not as strong as we need it to be. But it's very, very strong. Now moving on to Clawing Shadows. What this does, guys, this is making your Scorch Strike a ranged ability. Um, I don't know if it was ranged automatically uh before because like i said i wasn't able to test it but if you want your score strike to have a 30 yard range you need clawing shadows and i'll explain why i have this in a second after we get done with all the talents <clears throat> um wow like what this is pretty much a harry potter book i'm like floyd maybe like i don't like stressing my tongue with these fucking words what a debilitating infestation okay there we go Outbreak reduces the movement speed spread of all infected enemies by 50 yards. Guys, like I said, this is my RBG spec or battleground spec. The reason why I have this is because I'm going to be using Outbreak a lot because they changed the way Outbreak works. I will explain that in a second. But it's cool to have people constantly slowed. And it's an AoE slow. So, like I said, man... Um, this is just a great fucking ability. Asphyxiate is nice, but 45 seconds is a very long time in the battleground, and I'd rather have a constant, uh, what should, what's the word, a constant benefit to my team than having 
uh, like I said, a long ass cooldown like that. So we're going to go with debilitating infest infestation. But for dueling and arenas, you're probably going to have to need that asphyxiate. But let's move on to the next talent. Corpse Shield. Now this is very great. This is probably one of our major defensives. Um, pretty much what this does, guys, is when you pop this, every single damage that you're going to take, 90% of that is going to be going to your ghoul. So let's just say... Like I said, you pop this and all oh, they're just bursting the shit out of you. Your pet is going to lose the damage, not you. So this is a great defensive ability. Um, the only negative side about it is your pet is going to die because we cannot heal our pet. And another negative thing about it is that the ghoul is on a one minute cooldown. So I guess if we have something like this blizzard, um, we, it probably might be a good idea to decrease our rise dead ability. Because we're going to need this corpse shield a lot. And um, if we're not able to heal our pet, at least let our pet be able to be resummoned faster. Like this, that's a, a little flaw that I've been con uh, getting in contact with with the Unholy DK at the moment. So Blizzard, please do something with Core Shield and summon the ghoul or something. I don't know, but we'll get more into discussion later. We're just going over the talents now. Now Necrosis. They changed what this does. Now, pretty much what Necrosis does, guys, I don't want to keep reading the details. I just You guys read it yourself. Um... When you use one death coil, your next score strike is going to deal 25% um, more damage. Now this is awesome, guys, because if you if you've seen everything that I have so far, it's kind of all complementing each other. Ebon Fever is focusing on quicker dot damage. This is flaring up everybody within a hundred yard range. This is a ranged ability, so I can score strike from far away instead of being close to them. This is making sure everything's slowed. So this is kind of a kite spec. With this spec, guys, you're kind of going to be like a warlock, a plate warlock. And I'm gonna t I'm gonna show you what things what this shit is gonna look like in uh, action very very soon. So pretty much, Unholy is kind of like a plate warlock. Trust me and you literally do nothing for your damage like it's it's really kind of bogus and like I said I'll explain all that in a second I don't want to get too far off topic because I'm just excited to be on a beta and to help you guys out alright so that's what necrosis does guys now dark arbiter okay dark arbiter this is going to replace your gargoyle this motherfucker hits so hard but you have to be smart when you use it when you pop this gargoyle guys you want to make sure you have 100 runic power okay uh, well 115 because what's going to happen is the more runic power that you spend the harder he's going to fucking hit he gets one percent damage per runic power you spend so let's just say you manage to dump 150 runic power he's going to do 115 percent more damage it's insane i think i've seen a 600k cr uh, crit like this thing hits fucking hard man and like I said man if you're really good at managing your runes and getting rune runic power back fast and dumping it fast Arbiter is going to be very very great when it comes down to killing things now with that being said Blizzard <laughs> please allow Dark Arbiter to stay out for more than 15 seconds I understand that if he's out for that long it's going to be pain for whoever because you can just refill your running power out and dump it but god you got it on a three minute cooldown and i don't know if it's able to get cycloned or kicked or whatever but make it complimenting if you're going to make it such a long cooldown because everybody's able to do insane damage at least give us the dark arbiter uh at least give the dark arbiter some more justice because 15 seconds is over in like a blink of a fucking eye like i, I cast it out and like shit it's gone already so please make this last longer Again, I know I know we can probably ramp it up to like 300% if you give us a little bit more time. But let the other players deal with that. Let the other players CC it. You know what I'm saying? Make them fear the Dark Arbiter. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't really... This is pretty much going to be here to kill one thing. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. Enough talk about that. So now let's go to the Honor Talents, guys. Now, the, the Gladiator's uh, Medallion. This is pretty much your trinket, okay? Now, if you guys are going to be human, they change the way the human ratio works. Uh, this this is no longer a trinket. This is only the trinket stuns. Before, when you trinket, you were able to get out of silences, uh, roots, um, fears, etc. Uh, whatever you wanted to trinket, you could pretty much get out. But now, it's only 
usable for stuns, okay? So if you guys are, uh, are rooted or feared, don't pop every mirror for himself because it's not going to work. It's only to get out of stuns now. Alright, so that's why I have this. Reinforced armor, increased health. I mean, I don't really care too much for the other two for now, but that's why I have it. Just more health is always good in PvP. Um, what is this? Uh... Cataversius Paler. Oh man, this is this is terrible, man. Wait, Cataversius Paler. Man, I, this is this is awful. I can't pronounce these fucking words, dude. But anyway, what this does is um, what's gonna happen is if you get hit with a spell, instead of let's just say it's a hundred k damage, instead of you boom getting hit with a hundred k, you're gonna get hit with a hundred k. Boom, it's gonna go up to the top and put a, a dot on you that's going to deal a hundred k damage but it's going to be over time so it gives your healer more time to top you off so like I said this is pretty good for defense this is pretty good for defense but it doesn't it makes no sense to have dark sim here like this is defense this is defense but then you have a fucking dark sim here like come on blizzard fuck ne uh, necrotic <laughs> uh, necrotic aura I'm gonna have this because like I said we are like a warlock at the moment so I want all of my dots to deal a lot of damage I want my end pandemic to deal a lot of damage so I have necrotic ore just to increase my dots damage now with this with this talent uh, pandemic when let's just say I use outbreak once if I use outbreak again on that target with the disease on them it's going to pretty much do the same exact thing as epidemic but the difference is guys is um this only if it's only flaring off on the people next to the person with the outbreak not a hundred yards so that's why it's cool to spam outbreak if people are together but if these people are scattering off then you pop in pandemic whew, and then everybody just starts getting hit even more so you're pretty much a overlord of dots <laughs> it's i'm telling you i did a hundred million damage in one bg and like i said i'll get some footage up here for you in a second and last but not least, Unholy Mutation, guys. Unholy Mutation, pretty much, um, if your plague is dispelled, which healers are quick to do, you're going to unleash this blob, and it's going to pretty much apply slows to the target. Let me just make sure I'm not bullshitting. Okay, it's fine. Yes, so it's pretty much going to follow targets and slow people down. It's, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's CC, and it's really, really useful. Um, I have not tested out Necrotic Plague and Reanimation yet, so um, I'll probably get into these uh, a little bit more when I play the game a little bit more. Because like I said, this is day one, guys. Day one of me actually being able to do shit on the beta. So now let's talk about the ones that I don't have, okay? So that's what I have, that's why I have it, and I will have a video showing this in action um, in a different video. Now... All will survive pretty much summons a bow and arrow uh, ghoul that's going to be a ranged ghoul. And you can't heal your pets, guys. So, I don't know, man. I, you, there's no commands for it, so I don't know if it hits what you hit. But Ebon Fever, I just, I just love it. It speeds up my dots, and it just does damage. That's why I have it. And Bursting Sores, this pretty much... Um, Make sure, make sure, um, make sure festering wounds deal more damage. So if you go up on a target, guys, and you hit festering strike, it's going to apply wounds, two wounds per festering strike. So when you use scorch strike, boom, it pops, it pops a fucking rune, I mean a, a wound, and when that happens, that's pretty much what this does. It's going to increase the damage of the pop. But because we're in a ranged scenario with this build, it has no place. Because I'm focusing on dotting up shit, flaring it up. That's pretty much it. I'm not worrying about getting next to a target, do festering strikes, and then getting out of range. I want to stay away all the time. Because, like I said, our survivability sucks at the moment. Which is why we have to play like a warlock right now. Next, talent. Every fifth fester festering rune will provide you with a rune. Again, guys... I'm not going to be really festering striking as much as I should because this build is a ranged build. So it would not really compliment me to have this. You know, popping, like, I'm not going to really be popping wounds like that because I'm not going to be in range. And again, 
uh, blighted uh, rune weapon. What this does, guys, is you activate it, and you're going to have a buff over your head. Um, how, how long is that? It's your next four hours. It lasts for about like 30 seconds. Now what happens is, guys, when you go up to a target and you're auto-attacking, it's going to apply festering runes. Like I said, I'm not going to really be next to targets, so having th things that give me faster festering runes um, is not going to help me here. Like I said, but in the arena, this could complement this. You know what I'm saying? But this does not complement the fever. This does not complement uh, anything that I have right now. So that's why we don't have that. Unholy Frenzy, guys. This is very great. Um, pretty much, um, it gives you two seconds attack speed. Now, a cool way to use this, guys, is to get about... You can only get up to, I think, what is it, 10 or 8? I think it's 10 or 8 festering wounds at a time. I think it's 8 festering wounds at a time. Let me see. That doesn't really tell you, but I think the max festering runes you can have is eight. So if you have eight festering runes on a guy, guys, and you pop all eight of them, um, you're pretty much going to have eight times two is sixteen. So you're gonna have sixteen seconds of unholy frenzy. So this 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 two second stacks. So if you're like I said, focusing on your festering runes and popping them, you're gonna have unholy frenzy, which is cool. I don't know if our auto attacks deal a lot of damage for this to even matter. I mean, because it only increases our attack speed, so... Eh, it's good, but, I mean, I like the range. Even if I'm going with a different build, I still might fuck with the ranged, uh, Scourge Strike, because that's awesome. And what is this? Oh, this, like, a, this complements your Festering Runes. If you crit with a, with a Festering Strike, it's going to add an additional two to the Festering Wounds. So your one Festering Strike will be worth four festering runes instead of just two. We all know what a fixiate does, so I'm not gonna waste time with that. And sledge, like this guy is sludge, I mean this guy is pretty cool, but um out of having an, a stun and out of having a constant slow, fuck sludge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just you might as well just give him to us. Like or make him uh all will survive because like I said, having this guy you can't control means it's pointless. But if we have two ghouls that we can control, one do death grips, one to kick, one with a two second stun, that will kind of make DKs more of a skill cap type of class. So if I got this guy and he has a death grip, eh, I mean, I just, I need a stun in the arenas and I need, and I, and I just like this ability. So having, I don't know, I, this, this should not be here in... This pet is not that great to choose it over a stun and over fucking debilitating uh, infestation. Now, going over Spell Eater. Um, this pretty much just increases the time of your anti-magic shell and makes it bigger. Makes you absorb more magic. Like if you pop AMS, I don't have missing health, but you see that little glow? If I was missing half my health, you'll see that that glow has a shield. Once that shield breaks, AMS goes off, even if the shell doesn't last its full capacity, okay? Now, what this does is it makes the shell capacity bigger. So, it's pretty cool, but Corpse Shield is still going to be greater. Having more than just one defensive is great. And what does this do? You move 30%. Okay, Wraith Rock. Okay, what this does, guys, is it gets you out of roots. Where, where's it at? This thing gets you out of roots. And uh, my your movement speed increases, but the sad part about it is if you get hit, it it takes you out of Wraith Rock. So why the hell would you give us a pop out or a mobility uh, move when it just gets negated by any type of attack? So I think they need to rework Wraith Rock and make that something uh, to where we're immune to roots and we're immune to stuns and we can get to them fast and you know what I'm saying, kind of like. A charge you know like a charge like so we can get to the people or so we can get to safety because just giving us something to pop out of a root and then we're just still slow as fuck while we're in wraith form is just kind of bogus to me but that's what this does it just makes it, it makes you move 30 percent faster while that while that thing is activated let me just show you what it looks like when i get it back off of cooldown uh three two one see that's what it looks like guys it looks cool but like i said when you get hit you just get out of it and when you're slow it is still you're still slow as fucking wraith walk so it makes no sense 
that for it to even have an effect like that. But anyway, um, in, infected claws. What this does, guys, it it makes your ghouls claws able to put fashion wounds on the target now this could complement me with my range build because like I said I'm gonna be far away no matter what my goal is gonna be in combat so I can get fashion wounds on the target that way but but uh, claw does not occur that often and having a 35 percent chance does not complement us that well what I suggest with this one to make it a little bit more viable probably have claw apply four festering wounds not just one make 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 uh or make it a 50 percent chance for festering wounds to be applied after the pets clawing because 35 percent isn't that isn't that great and um like i said it it actually will go real good with the range build if this happened because you you then you don't have to worry about festering striking you'll just have the 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 goal applying a festering wounds and you can just burst it with a uh, score strike so like I said man if this if they buff this move I think that it'll make us a lot better with um, fucking up people's classes like from far away like cuz like I said if the ghoul is able to apply festering wounds that's great we, I don't like the fact that we need festering strike to apply festering wounds they should allow the ghoul to actually just automatically apply it like that'll make this class a little bit better and Shadow Infusion, guys, after your Transforming Ghoul is on cooldown, pretty much this, after using Death Coils, it's going to decrease the cooldown of that ability. The cooldown is one minute, but who cares about cooldown reduction when you have something to give you more damage? You know what I'm saying? So, fuck that. And a cool buff to transformate the ghoul guys is it has no cooldown. So, you can pretty much pop this whenever the fuck you choose. So, for instance, let's say you you want to kick somebody. You could transform and kick. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you want to have a two seconds. You could transform and stun. So, you can choose when you want to activate this, which is a great change. I, don't, I didn't like the fact that you needed to truck five death coils to transform them. Now that we're able to do it whenever we want, is going to kind of increase our skill cap as Unholy DK players. Now let's go over these two. Soul Reaper is pretty great. Pretty much what Soul Reaper does is that if when you apply Soul Reaper and you burst Festering Wounds, you're going to receive Haste, okay? Now, again... Nothing here complements my festering wounds. I'm going to be far away, so this is kind of not going to be ideal. Because not only am I going to have to have festering wounds on the target, I'm also going to have to apply Soul Reaper, which has a 45 second cooldown now. And it's just not complimenting me. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like this at, at all right now. And this should be an ability, not a talent. <laughs> Defile. Um, I actually didn't even read this because I didn't use it last season. So let me just take the time to read this real quick. Okay, this actually got a, a nice buff. So pretty much what this is, guys, is when you hit the file, you're going to receive um, a buff of 150 mastery, stacking up to 10 times, guys. So you do 150 times 10, and that's how much mastery you'll get if you stay inside the file. So a good thing that you can do with this, guys, is you can pop the file, sit inside the file, Stun the guy while he's inside the file, or get somebody to root him while he's inside the file, and just shred his ass. But, um, I don't, I think, let's see how long, uh, the file actually lasts for. See, let's just see what it does right now. See my mastery? 150, uh, why isn't it going up? Okay, that's kind of weird. Let's just do it again. I think it bugged. <laughs> There's no way. It says, it just says that. It says, maybe it's bugged. I don't know. And grows in radius and increases your mastery by 150. Stack it up to 10 times. Yeah. So yeah. Um. It should indeed. Let me just try it on on one of these guys. Defile. Okay. There we go. So look. You see that? Look how much mastery I'm getting with this. But. Um. It's not that long, but. I like it for to be. I like it to stack a little bit faster, and I like for it to last a little bit longer because that's actually tremendously great. Because, like I said, 
uh, Defile is only on a 30 second cooldown. So you can set this up with a stun like a lot. So if you get somebody in this, it'll be fucking bad news for them. So that's it with the talents, guys. Uh, like I said, it's a little eh, off the wall because, like I said, I'm I'm new to this too. But as I get on, as I keep playing this game, and as I uh, start analyzing things a little bit more, I'll deliver it a lot better to you guys. Oh, before we get, let me get over. It. Let me let's go over the honor talents that I didn't explain. Uh, let me just go over the more important ones. Corrupted fever. Uh, pretty much, if somebody's dispelling, I mean, if somebody's being healed by your dots are on them, it just does more damage to them. But who cares about that when you have Wandering Plague, which uh, is going to you put the dot on the target and it's going to just keep bouncing to the target. So it just helps you keep your dots up and it deals damage to them over eight seconds. So this is kind of really good to use. Um, Necrotic Strike. I have not been able to test this yet. Let me actually test this now, to be honest. What, what does this do? Does this replace the score strike? No, it doesn't replace score strike. Put it on V. Does it even work? It's not even want to work for me. Yeah, there's a few bugs in the game right now, guys. I can't even test this out for you. I probably have to be in actual PvP to test this out. So I'll, I'll get some answers with this in a second for you. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, guys. Everything else is self-explanatory. You already know what Dark Sim does. It steals a spell. Anti-Magic Zone, nothing's changed. You just throw this out and it's a big absorb bubble for everybody. Um, like I said, Dark Sim is a great ability. I don't know why it's under a defensive tree. Um, these orbs are pretty nice. Like This one decreases the cooldown recover rate of abilities by 30%. So that's pretty nice. And this one is going to make the targets lose 2% of their maximum health, and it stacks up to 10 times. So this is actually a really, really good ability to have probably in RBGs as well. Um, but like I said, guys, I'd rather have my dots doing more damage because my dots are going to be ticking very fast because of Evan Fever. All right, guys, so now that I went over the Unholy DK talents, I'm going to do my best to get some Unholy DK content out for you guys. I'm going to do a BG like right now, but not in this video. I'm going to make another video with that. But this is the Unholy DK talents. And I'm, like I said, guys, this is, a, this is all new to me. So like I said, I'll get my delivery up a little bit when it comes in, especially when the game comes out. Because now that I have a head start and I can see what things do, when I actually take the time to master it, I'm going to make sure you guys master it as well. Okay? So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Like, subscribe, refer me to some friends, and please continue to be a fantastic audience. This is your boy Hype Down, and I'll see you next time. Peace.